Um, so our next speaker is Avia Watson um, from the lab of Natalia. Nat Natalia. <laughs> hey, hello, my name is Avia and I'm a PhD candidate at Dr. Natalia Freund's laboratory. Uh, first, I would like to thank the conference organizers for giving me this opportunity to present my work about inhibiting antibodies that occur during mycobacterium tuberculosis infection. So mycobacterium tuberculosis is a pathogen highly adapted to humans. Its first evidence in humans is dated to about 9,000 years ago. However, only in 1882, Robert Koch discovered that the highly infectious disease, tuberculosis, the shortly named TB, is the cause of this bacteria. This bacteria typically infect the lung macrophages. It either resides there creating latent infection, which is not symptomatic and neither infectious. However, it can be developed any time to active disease. Still today, TB is a global pandemic with about one-fourth of the world's population being latently infected and with 1.6 million deaths occur worldwide a year. TB is still spreading because challenges in both prevention and treatment. The only vaccine, the BCG, is ineffective in pulmonary TB and in adults, and there is rise in antibiotics resistance. Another challenge is the rise in immunocompromised individuals, especially HIV infected. And therefore, new methods for TB prevention and treatment are essential. So following pathogen encounter, uh, there is activation of both adaptive and, immune, uh, adaptive and innate immune responses. As part of the adaptive immunity, B cells are being stimulated by the pathogen, uh, and they are being differentiated into antigen-specific memory B cells and antibody-secreting cells. Specifically in TB, the role of B cells and antibodies is considered controversial. And despite having uh, recent research suggesting their role, still inhibiting antibodies and their targets are still unknown. And for that reason, we aim to understand the role of B cells and antibodies during the mycobacterium infection. So at first, to identify the targets for antibodies developed during TB infection, we recruited a cohort of 26 actively Israeli patients in red and 20 healthy individuals in green. And we measured the Xterra antibody responses in ELISA towards several TB proteins. We found one protein, PSTS1, a phosphate transporter that binds Xterra antibodies. As you can see, some patients with very strong response, so we chose to focus on these antigens and specifically on patient four with the highest serological response. So to further characterize the antibodies targeting PSTS1, we obtained large blood donation from patient four, and we single cell sorted all the memory B cells that are specific to PSTS1. Then we amplified the heavy N light chain of each antibody, we cloned them and produced them in mammalian cells. And at the end of this process, we produced anti-PSTS1 antibodies that were similar to the one produced by the patient. So overall, we managed to amplify 102 heavy chain sequences. In color, 16 sequences were clonal. And from them, we managed to produce nine antibodies that bind that uh, eight of them were binding very strongly to PSTS1 in ELISA, and they also bind two pathogenic lysets, which was very reassuring for us. At the end, we focused on antibodies members of two clones. In magenta, one clone is P436, and in um, blue, two antibodies that have more than 90% a sequence homology, and I'm going to continue with these colors and antibodies along all the slides. So to for further understand the interaction between the antibody, antibodies and the antigen, PSTS1, uh, we 
our collaborators from uh, the Xiang Laboratory in Beijing constructed a core crystal of our antibodies and the antigen. And here you can see two structures superimposed on one another. And you can appreciate that the two antibodies bind different regions on PSTS1. When we further validated this binding, we generated PSTS1 proteins with point mutation in the contact residues of the antibodies. As, any, as you can see, there is reduction in all clonal antibodies of P470 when mutating its contact residues. And here, you can see reduction in P436 while doing the same uh, to its residues. Next, we wanted to understand the function of those antibodies. So here we collaborated with uh, Professor Babak Javid Laboratory from UCSF. There they work with pathogenic bacteria. They infect human PBMCs with pathogenic bacteria in the presence and absence of our antibodies. And following incubation time, lysis of the cells and plating them, uh, the colony forming units of the bacteria uh, was determined. As, as you can see here, there is reduction of, of about 30 to 40 percent in bacteria load, which means that those antibodies inhibit the bacteria in culture. To understand the mechanism of function of those antibodies, we blocked FC receptors, and in the same assay, we can see using the antibodies, there is no longer inhibition effect. So to further uh, understand these uh, relations and activity of the FC, we carried out a reciprocal experiment in collaboration with Dr. Roni Dahan. We mo mutated our antibodies in the FC region in one point mutation, and then they will long go longer bind FC receptors. Doing it in the same assay before, we can see no longer inhibition effect of the mutated antibodies. So which makes us understand that both antibodies act in an FC-dependent manner. So after we got two antibodies, P436 and P463, that inhibit mycobacterium in culture in an FC-dependent manner, we wanted to take it a step forward and to understand uh, if this inhibition effect also done in, uh, in vivo. So we injected our antibodies to mice, and then we gave them an aerosol challenge of pathogenic bacteria. And following three weeks, the mice were sacrificed, and the bacteria load in the lungs was determined. And here we were very happy to get these results because the uh, inhibition effect was kept and we still saw about 30 to 40 percent inhibition with our antibodies. Uh, so far, all this data was published two years ago, and now I would like to, sh uh, to show you some unpublished data. Uh, I'm trying to improve the potency of those antibodies, and in collaboration with uh, Dr. Rodem Rubinstein from Tel Aviv University, and using computational approach, we predicted contact residues between the antibody and the antigen that upon replacement might improve the binding of the antibody. Altogether, we produced 19 variants of P463 antibodies. And as you can see here, the binding of one variant was greater than twofold um, when checking the binding to attenuated bacteria M. cherry. So, and these results lead us to our uh, next goal to understand if better binding is also correlated with better inhibition effect. And uh, we're actually waiting for uh, the result of the inhibition effect. Um, I'll summarize here. Uh, we isolated two human monoclonal antibodies, P436 and P463. These two antibodies bind PSTS1 antigen, 
and two pathogenic lyse. And the antibodies bind two different locations on PSTS1. Those antibodies also inhibit mycobacterial growth in vivo and in vitro in an FC-dependent manner. And in addition to that, we generated a variant antibody with better improved binding to bacteria. So I would like to thank uh, patient four, uh, Dr. Natalia Freund that guided me through this project, uh, all my lab members and our collaborators. And I would also uh, would like to thank, thank the Center for Combating Pandemics for a very generous uh, scholarship. And thank you, and um, I would be happy to take questions. from someone that comes from the pathogen side. I don't I'm always <laughs> can you comment on the function of PST, PSTS1? It's oh. a yes. It's a phosphate tran transporter located in the inner membrane. And it's actually membrane. yes, and it's actually uh, three proteins uh, that combine together. So we have PSTS1, 2, and 3. And we used only one of them that located outside. Okay, so it's highly expressed. Yes. I'm guessing. So that's why the neutralization works. Yes, it's not perfect, but it works, yes. So the, the antibody used here, the monoclonal, uh, for cloning the scaffold of IPD1? Yes. What, what is the isotype that is lacking for the expression? Do, we, do you have information when you do the, the single cell about what the isotype for, for the actual antibodies? It's, a, it's an IgG1. It's the all of them are IgG1, all the antibodies, they focus on several antibodies, but if you take all yes. the all of them are IgG1? Yes, all of them were IgG1. We also sorted for IgG at the uh, begin uh, with. Uh, yes. IgG. Yes. Okay, but you don't know if there are any IgA there. We couldn't find anything there. No IgA. Although it's in the lab. But we took from lab. Yeah, but still. But the yeah, the percental is uh, very low for uh, I. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.